Good evening, everybody. It's 9.30 on the East Coast, 6.30 on the West Coast on a Monday. That must mean it's time for your weekly Calamity Jane live stream. James, how are you doing on this late spring or I guess mid-spring evening? I am doing just dandy. Ooh, it took a second there. Old, yeah, I had to rip off my old line. from. I was trying to change my line from last week, but I, think mm -hmm. I used dandy before, so sorry I'm being a little bit more... Repetitive. I mean, you've I you've dandy to. on more than one occasion. I feel like <laughs> I feel like your Probably. your response should be just dandy, right? I mean, I say the same thing every I'm time we start doing. a stream. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing I'm doing just dandy. Um, Amit and I we uh, just got back from a weekend in Texas, hanging out with family there. So, and we're back. And then Eric, you and I were looking at maps of Texas. Maps of Texas. Exactly. That's why we are two minutes late. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just kind of where is where is austin where is lubbock yeah yeah it's yeah. it's weird for for some reason i thought austin was a coastal town no idea why it is nowhere yeah. near one of the coasts in texas yeah. it is a yeah. in, an inland city if ever there were in inland it is about as inland as atlanta is right i mean it's yeah. Yeah. it's like four hours to the nearest large mm -hmm. body of water mm -hmm. uh i have yeah. no idea why i thought austin was a um a water facing city but it is not yeah. anyway uh that is neither here nor there what are we working on tonight james last uh, week we um we didn't do anything we just looked at each other and talked about writing all night <laughs> um, yeah we did and i'm sure we'll have many more of those streams in our future too but yeah let's get back to some doodling today and and talking there sounds like there's some things to talk about including a monster hunter oh update yes that yeah, we're, yeah. Raving, raving about. Yes, really, indeed. Uh, a game changer, I say. I declare. Oh my gosh. That's pretty crazy. I can't believe it was a game changer of sorts, but we'll go with that. Uh, I am. Okay. Uh, I think you can see my screen here. I can. All right. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to work on a scene tonight where she's going to pull out Uncle Leon's gun. Mm hmm. So, I'm going to do the first post here and try to get to this post here. And you see that I grabbed this kind of sp spaghetti pose so there's a little bit of stuff here that works mm -hmm. stuff that is still rough but i could use some of this the general pose here i could probably use for the most part it was a change your hands tweak, right change your hand and stuff like that i'm if i'm being if i want to be ambitious i actually might try to do a more of a more of a frontal shot like this it's not exactly that front shot that i worked on a couple weeks ago but mm -hmm. i might try to do another shot here if i'm feeling ambitious but we'll see where we get to tonight okay. can i can so. i pause for a second and expose one of your implicit biases real quick yeah of course yeah are you well maybe i don't know are you a lefty or a righty i am a righty okay so we are exposing one of your implicit biases because you have you have just naturally made calamity a righty as a as a southpaw, mm. I I must call to attention the fact that you have natively made calamity. Yeah, I, a I, I've shown a bias. But here's the here's the thing though. I will say, <laughs> like this, I think this is the only time where she actually favors a hand, right? And mm -hmm. then, well, I'm trying to think of other places because, for example. There's an earlier shot where she carries the hose, and you can't tell which hand she favors. Mm -hmm. the, um, and she carries it to help feed tinsel water when she pulls up. And I don't remember if there's anywhere where you actually see her do anything like that. But the reason why she's actually favoring the right hand is it, might, it could very well be the bias, but it's also the shot. Mm -hmm. Because um, I'll yeah, if if her arm is crossing, yeah, exactly, then it's in, it's in it, it'll look really place. weird. Yeah, and so I have to do it this way. Because um, I want to make sure the action, as again, as an animator, you always want to get the good, the best, strongest silhouette. So if I put that tall black, it has to, she has to be righty in this case. And and the way we have a stage, that that's the only way we can do it. Like the whole thing. So there's a there. I have a I have a little bit a little bit of an escape clause to escape the bias. Mm. I guess you say. I'm just but saying I, that if you were lefty and you made her left hand, this scene would have been completely composed differently. Yeah, the shot would absolutely. have been composed differently. Mm -hmm. I'm Absolutely. just saying, yeah. I, you know, no judgment. I uh, I forgive you. Nobody's perfect. Um, yeah. After yeah. all, That's it is a though. it is a right-handed person's world. I'm just living in it. Um, yeah, I know, I know. You and uh, the who are ten percent? Ten percent of the population is left-handed. Like I think President Obama was a lefty. Uh, yeah. Shigeru Miyamoto is a lefty. 
Who's who's? Shigeru Miyamoto is a lefty. Oh wow! That's why Link uh, until Twilight Princess was left-handed. Really, mm -hmm. I didn't notice that. Mm-hmm. Oh. And so, honestly, yeah. so fun fact: uh, Link was only right-handed in the Wii version of Twilight Princess. He was still left-handed in the GameCube version of Twilight Princess. Huh. In fact, the entire game world was flipped, mirrored for the GameCube version. So Gerudo Desert, which mm -hmm. is the canon version of it, on the Wii version was in the, the southwest corner of the map. On the GameCube version, Gerudo Desert was in the southeast corner of the map. I, I kid you not, rather than just change the animation of Link to be left-handed, they just mirrored the entire everything uh, in Twilight Princess to make left Link left-handed in the GameCube version. Hmm. Also, if you have the GameCube version of Legend of Zelda, you are sitting on a landmine. They made almost no copies of the GameCube version of so, Twilight Not Princess. a landmine, but a gold mine. A gold mine, sorry. Yeah. A gold mine. Landmine meaning like, oh, let's go, yeah. yeah. No, 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 a um, gold mine, yeah. Uh, wait, which which version of the the GameCube version? version of Twilight Princess? Oh if you gosh, manage to get really? a version, of it, it's so rare. They made so few of them that the GameCube version of Twilight Princess is really valuable. Huh. I think I I think I got this with um, Wind Waker. I got the Master Quest or mm -hmm. something. Like that, that was a Wind Waker. Yeah, yeah, that was a Wind Waker thing. Yeah. So I, are those rare too? Is that one rare too? That is or extremely rare? rare. Yeah, the Master Quest GameCube disc is extremely valuable. Yeah. So is that also a gold mine? Um, yeah, sword? that's also a gold mine. I have that. I'm just saying. I'm just yeah. saying. Cool. You and I, I both have a high value. I, I actually game. have a lot of really, really high value GameCube games. Like I have Cubivore. I have Wait, the game. I don't even know what that is. Yeah, I have the GameCube ports of both Resident Evil 2, 3, and Code Veronica. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Um, but I I mean, if you're like me, and I, I'm assuming you probably are, you don't want to ever get rid of them, huh? No, I don't really own them uh, with the intent to sell. But, yeah, you know, someday um, it might come to a point where I do need to sell them. And if that day comes, then at least I have those ready to make a little cash on them, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm the same way. I all I'm doing is sitting in my <clears throat> in my little storage Rubbermaid thing in the closet. And no, but I know I right. have them, but it's never... But, I mean, here's the thing, though. Like, if we sell them, you know, and we make a little bit of cash on them, all they're at best, all they're going to do is go to a collector who's going to then put it on a shelf, right? Yep. So it's going to yeah, go so... from one storage location to another storage location. Another, yeah. But, yeah. you know, it's... I mean, any any collector who buys it, they're not... They're not buying it to play the game. I mean, anybody who is collecting Resident Evil games, they've played the, the hell out of every Resident Evil game. They're collecting these games because of their love and their passion for Resident Evil, not not because it's like, mm -hmm. oh, I've never played Resident Evil Code Veronica. I'm going to spend an extra amount of money to play the GameCube version of Resident Evil Code Veronica. Right? That's just not, yeah. that's not yeah. a thing. What's um, interesting also is um, I feel like YouTube's kind of contributed to this whole... Well, and the pandemic, I guess. But this whole collector culture for games, mm -hmm. it kind of exploded. It's kind of become, it sort of feels like um, what comic books were in the 80s and 90s a little bit. Mm -hmm. Now what's going on with video games a little oh bit. Oh my God, the um, foil covers. Everybody, the foil covers are going to be the next thing. But, except that they publish yeah. so many of the foil covers that most of them aren't worth anything. Are you talking about in comic book land? Yeah, like in comic book ABC? land. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. That, that's the thing. You can't, you know, you can't, uh, see the difference between the, this YouTube phenomenon with with uh, collector culture with video games. The, what's different about it versus the collecting obsession in comic books of the '90s is that the the collection obsession of comic books in the '90s was manufactured by the publishers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Whereas the this new phenomenon uh, in the YouTube era with games and, and comic books, honestly, is homegrown, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's more organic yeah Yeah. so all the value so this is an interesting thing when it comes to the secondary market right and resales and things like that anything everything is worth nothing until you sell it yep mm -hmm. yeah yeah so people think that that yeah exactly like uh they're 
comic book is worth this much money, but yet it's not until you sell not. it for that amount of money. Yeah. Yeah. So that that person who owns the GameCube version of Twilight Princess, it's actually not worth anything until you sell it, right? Yeah. It's an interesting, yeah. it's a subtle distinction, but it's one that matters not just from the standpoint of a collector, but also from the government because they want to tax you on that. They want to steal some of that money, right? And mm -hmm. so if you own this copy of Twilight Princess, it's not worth anything. They want you to sell it because then they can steal their pound of flesh, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, it is, it is a very important distinction uh, the appraised value versus the actual value of something, right? Mm -hmm. That's why if you look at, you know, you can't really get an actual value of something on eBay because it's all appraised value, self-appraised in the case of eBay. Yeah. But it's it's one, it's appraised value. Yeah, but the one thing you can do with eBay, though, is you just look under, you just make sure you do the filter under complete listings and you really do get an accurate. You do, yeah, you do get a temperature. You, you get a temperature, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I've got a bunch of Hellboy action figures that I'm thinking about selling. Um, oh really? Oh, that's a shame. Well, you know, really just don't, you I, know, I gotta, I gotta pay the, money. I gotta pay the rent, and you know. Yeah. Just, okay. The the reality is, is I'm just, I don't believe I'm ever gonna live a life that's gonna allow me to display those things, and so they're just gonna sit in a storage locker in a piece of Tupperware forever. Yeah. Honestly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I might as well make a little cash on it and send it to a collector who can use something for them, right? Or, you know, yeah. can actually display them or something like that. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, I mean, if you take the temperature on eBay for those, and, again, I have the complete set. Um, some are much rarer than others. Some of them, actually, they don't have listings on eBay. Um, that, are they that rare? Is they're that, that the rare. Or, yeah, I mean, I've got to believe that the, it's that they're that rare. I mean, I've got – I have every single – entry into this i even have comic-con exclusive figures that were only sold at comic-con right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and some of them are even rarer than that wow jeez um, so um. yeah i've so i've taken the temperature on ebay and the minimum price that i should ask for at least based on you know my analysis of ebay is a hundred bucks per Wow. Yeah. Not bad. No, it's it's quite good actually. Given that I spent like twenty bucks per when they originally came out in like two thousand and six. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So quite an appreciation in terms of value. But yeah, so yeah, you're right. eBay is a great way to get a sort of a temperature reading on the value of something. But yeah. it that's what it is though. It's just it's just a temperature. It's not it has no value until you sell it, right? Yeah, yeah. Ultimately, that is the that is the issue, though. Is yeah, can you actually get it for that price? And mm -hmm. on top of that, then, then, as collecting has become more complicated, now you have to get. I mean, you don't have to do this. You can just go off your word. But when I used to run a comic book store and sell comic books and stuff like that, you don't have to worry about having a CGC grade mm -hmm. to tell you that this is worth this. You could just eyeball it and you talk with the person that's trying to sell it or who you're trying to buy it from. And you come to consensus, and you, then you agree on a price and move on. But now I don't know what I haven't. I've been so out of that for like years. I don't know what it's like now. But I'm assuming a lot of people are pre-built to just ask the question: Well, was the CGC grade on this action figure? Are the corners perfect? You know, to where right. I get it. You know, but especially if you're spending a lot of money. But man, it's like some of the charm is kind of gone. I think it's kind of been uh, muddled a little bit because yeah, it's uh, been corporatized. Yeah, you know, you'll you'll yeah. be you'll be sad to know that if you actually want a an official grading on it, you actually have to mail it to. Yep. Yep. They then look at it. They and then and they send it back to you after they provide the grading. Yeah. And this is your grade, and then like yeah. you're just at the mercy of 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 a, of UPS, uh, FedEx, whatever, who can lose in the mail. So the way I, the way, I mean, I've looked into that too, and it's like the way I would only do is I only, I'd only do grading if I went to a comic con and do it right there because they usually have their tables. Yeah, there. they do have the tables there. Yeah. Yeah. Now I don't know how long the line is for that stuff. Oh my god, I, would, I, I, I bet it's a million it. miles long now, these days. Yeah. I mean, I haven't been to comic con in over a decade at this point, Same or close here. to. So. I think when the last comic con I went to, I think you were, I think I saw you and. Uh, friend kevin there i think or something like that the last time i went to comic-con was in 
2006, 2007, somewhere around there. Yeah, that's yeah. about the same time I went. I thought I ran to you and Kevin. I saw it. It's been so long. But Jim, Jim I remember talking to you a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I was still married at the time. I went with my ex-wife. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, what's weird, though, is we actually drove down. Um, so, you know, we obviously lived in LA, in LA at the time. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. But we wanted to do like a long weekend. So we, you know, my ex and I, we drove down, we went to San Diego, we went to Old Town, we did all this other stuff. And then like Comic-Con was just a part of that. So we actually had to like find parking and all this other stuff. It was ridiculous. Um, <laughs> cause you know, there's a train if you, if you're an LA native, there's a train that goes right down to san yeah. diego mm-hmm. so you can just hop on the train and there's a stop like across the street from comic-con yeah um, yeah it's really nice yeah it's super <laughs> convenient that. yeah but um, anyway that's that's apropos of nothing um but yeah so i'm gonna i mean maybe not this weekend but i'm gonna dig all my action figures out of the my storage unit this weekend and start prepping them to collect them in there's a uh, there's a, a toy shop that buys stuff really close to me actually, so I'll take them in there and see what they're gonna offer me. If they're gonna offer anything less than a hundred dollars per each of these, then obviously it's a no go. But mm-hmm. you know, since I have the compl- I mean, this is not it's not an, a, a uh, an exaggeration by any stretch. I have the complete collection, all three series, all limited releases all Comic-Con exclusives. I have every single action figure that was made in this, this Hellboy series, right, of action figures. Um, wait, wait, wait. Uh, okay, so help, help, me, yeah. help me catch up here. Series, because, like, you're not talking about all Hellboy of all time. You're talking about this particular series. They did, yeah, so, so they did three series okay. of figures, and then uh, they did a bunch of limited releases. Uh, okay. Yeah, oh, man. I know. I, it kills me that I have to sell these. I just I need the money, um, mm-hmm. but um, but like yeah. So okay. So there's three series, and they did different characters per series. So in series one, there was Hellboy, and Creed Goffin number nine, and the head of um, Hermann von Klempt or whatever the 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 disembodied head of the the evil German scientist. I don't remember his name off the top of my head, um, and, and a few other characters uh, like Liz Sherman. And then series two added like the alien, and then you know series three had like uh, um, uh, uh, um, Roger the hom- homunculus um, and Abe Sapien and things like that, right? Mm-hmm. So there was three series of releases, and then they did these custom releases as well. So uh, there was, and I don't really know what series they fall into, but they have like Hellboy. And all of the samurai ghost heads from the short story heads. They have mm-hmm. battle damaged Hellboy. Or they have like <laughs> Hellboy with trench coat. So they have yeah. they're, they're this custom Hellboy with a canvas trench coat that they made for the character. And then there's an even a rarer version, battle damaged trench coat Hellboy. Of course. Of so they have course. a trench coat, but they've like sort of scorched it, right? And they're like yeah. 500 or less of these were made. Like those are the ones like Battle Damage Trenchcoat Hellboy is the one that you can't find on eBay. It's so rare, right? Wow. So, okay. So what would that be going for, would you think? I mean, that know? one, given that you can't even find it priced on, on eBay, I mean, I wouldn't yeah, set the price any pretty... less than 200 right? I mean. Well, I mean, is that is that something where you would actually hang on to it maybe for a little bit before you even – Think Look, about selling it because for it's me, so rare. honestly, it's it's all or nothing, right? I'm either gonna, okay. I'm uh, not gonna. Right. I mean, I spent so long collecting these that mm-hmm. I'm not gonna sell a single piece and then make my collection incomplete, right? I'm either gonna sell the whole collection or none of it. Um, okay. Frankly, I mean, yeah, I don't know. We're talking yeah. now, and I'm like, man, maybe there's got to be another way to find money. I really don't want to lose these pieces. I really. What is that, that Marie Kondo thing? Like, get rid of anything that doesn't spark joy? Remember that? That was an obsession for, like, a minute. I, they She even had, like, a Netflix miniseries. No, I'm completely... You've lost me on this one. I, okay. I think you're, you're, you're on your own in this... You're in a black box in this one. I don't All know, right, I, well, I can hear you. So I don't know where you're at. Here. More plugged-in individuals will know this than you, James. So okay. for, like, five seconds, there was this Japanese... 
Um, I don't know if she was an interior designer. Oh, or... is she the one that's uh, about organizing your space to have? Yeah, a yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the oh, one. That's the one. I didn't yeah, know yeah, her yeah. name. I didn't Marie know her name. Kondo. Yeah, I saw. Yeah. Okay, that's. Oh, okay. Now, now I'm caught up. I'm, I'm back. I'm back now. Okay. Okay. So, so like, her big thing was when you're decluttering your space, look at every object and go. Okay. Does this spark joy in you? Huh. Interesting. And okay. if it sparks joy, then keep it. If you feel nothing for it, then get rid of it, right? That's not going to help somebody. I mean, I'm not saying that you're a hoarder. No, by no stretch, that, actually. But a hoarder, like, if you say that to a hoarder, they're not going to... Everything brings them joy because they yeah, need yeah. it. Yeah, I know, I know. It's, it, was, yeah. it was a thing that only white people obsessed about, but... <laughs> okay, okay. I, I she use was Japanese, this, right? Yeah, yeah, she was Japanese, but in, in our culture, in American culture, Japanese are white adjacent, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> okay. Um... Anyway, not to get too political, but um, uh, I don't know. I'm talking to you about these action figures. I'm like, man, I really don't want to lose these. I, I really don't want to. I don't know if you. Sh- I really don't want to sell Creed Goffin number nine. I mean, I, I really love that action figure. You know. Yeah, man, you're you're talking to the. I mean, you're talking to the wrong friend on this because. I, I like, know. I know. It, you're talking me into keeping them on my side, but it's not me. It's your stuff. Well, I mean, I'm literally off. talking myself into keeping them ever <laughs> as we're having this conversation um yeah oh, man it kills me i don't know i need the cash and i know i can get a lot of money i mean there, uh-huh. there there is i think maybe 15 pieces in my collection that's that's everything i think 15 pieces which means you know we're looking at between at a minimum 1500 dollars to over two grand right okay that's right. just two grand two thousand uh, uh, approximate dollars again they don't have any value until i sell them but mm-hmm. approximately mm-hmm. i could get the, you know that's two thousand dollars that's just sitting in a storage unit somewhere right yeah you know yeah when you put it like that it just it does put it in perspective a little bit too. yeah exactly right so these are things that i love and i have saved they have gone from Los Angeles to Seattle, from Seattle yeah. to Atlanta. I mean, I've, I've held I've these things a, on a journey. Yeah, yeah they've been the all over Atlanta. because, you know, I, I have had this fantasy that someday I will have a space where I can, you know, put them on display and enjoy them and talk about them, right? The to people who come over, you know, I, I the luxury I have. I've been collecting uh, the Nintendo action figures, the Amiibo, since mm-hmm. they first released them in 2014, and I, I have almost all of them. I am yeah. missing two physical ones, uh, the QB character and uh, Solaire from Dark Souls. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. That's right. You did have that one. I remember you yeah, talking about that yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. I was um, very envious of, envious of that one. Um, um, yeah. One. Yeah, that one... That one had a very, very um, limited run, GameStop exclusive. Uh, because we live in the future, robots bought all of them before humans could. And the resale value on eBay, the, 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 the cheapest you can get one of those for is like 100 bucks, unopened, right? For Solaire? Yeah, for Solaire. Opened, it's still like 75 right? Mm. Um, okay. I just don't have the money to, to complete my collection. Um. Okay, hold on. Well, okay, th- uh, we're 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 out here. So, well, I'm not. I think our. Okay. I don't know. So I just got an error from YouTube saying that we're not getting enough bandwidth. Really? Yeah. I don't know what's going on. I. Huh. I've had a lot of internet problems recently. Oh, that sucks. Well, so we're that's fine. We're gonna just we're gonna keep um, we'll keep going, keep going we'll still, because I don't yeah. have a choice. There's nothing yeah. I can do. Yeah. Um, it could also just be a YouTube thing. Anyway, anybody who's watching this, this could be getting very weird for you. I don't know. We're gonna keep talking. Maybe yeah. this will be a short half hour one because YouTube is acting weird, or yeah, my we'll my to... ISP is acting weird, one way or the other. We'll review it after, and then we'll see how bad it was. Okay, it seems it seems to be magically back at excellent condition now. <laughs> huh? Whatever. So let's see. We're at a uh, we're at about the twenty six minute mark. We're at twenty four forty three according to YouTube. Okay. 
Okay. All right. Well, anyway. we'll go back and review. See how bad of a hiccup was. Anyway, let's go back. Yeah. So, you're so back yeah. Back yeah. Yeah. So you know, I the the. The benefit about the amiibo is they're small, right? I mean, at most they're yeah. three inches tall. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I have, you know, minus QB and um, Solaire, I have all of the physical statues, which at this point, since, you know, since I've been collecting for nine years, almost a decade, uh, numbers in, it, you can in fact see a, a few of them behind me, actually, uh, almost 200, 200 figures. Mm-hmm. But because they're so tiny, I can put them in, you know, display cases. I have two display cases and a mantle over my fireplace that I can show all of these in. Um, mm-hmm. And I'll be honest, I love looking at them. I love the design of them. I love the the aesthetics yeah, of them. Awesome. They, they they're just awesome. fun to look at, right? And, and really, mm-hmm. honestly, what's the actual purpose of life is to find some amount of happiness, some amount of joy, some amount of fun, right? So again, you're subscribing to what she was saying. Um, Absolutely. If bring you joy, then yes, then you need to. Yeah. yeah. The, the difference is, is that because Amiibo are so small, I can have 200 of them and I can display all of them, right? Mm-hmm. These Hellboy mm-hmm. action figures are just by volume, uh, six inches tall, uh you know, well, more more like eight inches tall, six inches wide, three inches deep. They're big things, right? Because none of them they're open. That's the other thing. They're all still new in box. Yeah, they, they, they right? take up a lot of real estate. Yeah, so they take up a lot of real estate. I, you know, I have no place to put fifteen giant unopened action figures in my apartment. Um, yeah. and so that's honestly that's why they have sat in storage for as long as they have. Is I just don't have any place. To display them you know mm-hmm. and so you know the amiibo are at this point there's one two three four five more that are planned to be released after over a decade of production and then after that they're going to be done to this point Making... there's no there's no announcements beyond the last five well no six i'm sorry there's six more okay. um and so after those six you know then i've largely got a complete collection you can get in sort of the esoterica of the cards right they have animal crossing cards and Mm -hmm. mario sports all-stars cards and a few other things and and i don't have any of the series five animal crossing cards and i don't have all of the previous series and i don't have all of the mario kart sports cards but i have a majority of them right Mm -hmm. anyhow i'm really God, we have really gotten to the weeds on this one. I apologize. <laughs> no, it's in- it's interesting. I mean, because uh, I'm again, I'm an uh, I'm a recovering collector. I can, yeah, I went crazy for Ninja Turtles, X Men. When I was I'm a kid, like, all, yeah, 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 like, yeah. Went crazy for all that stuff, and I have a lot of that stuff in a storage locker back in Utah, where mm-hmm. all these the whole whole generation of X Men figures are just sitting there. I haven't done anything with them, and they're just sitting in their bubble package and everything like that but i'm not doing anything with them i'm paying i'm paying for storage for mm-hmm. what you know like and they're not gonna be and they were all over they were pretty they were all over the place i don't know how what their value is it was just me being a collector mm-hmm. where, where you, what you have though is some, it's pretty rare um but it's also kind of part of that whole you just have to find the right oh boy religious collectors that want that you know um to you know, so that they know they exist in the wild and they can buy them. So yeah, eBay would be a bad thing. Man, yeah. what are you telling me that? I'm still kind of like. I know. I'm gonna dig them out. I'm gonna dig them out of my storage unit come this weekend, and you know, um, I don't think I'm gonna sell them this weekend. I'm gonna look at them and really work on convincing myself. And speaking of like the collector instinct, I, I feel like everything is a spectrum, right? You've got people who. Yeah are completely they don't care about anything right mm-hmm. i i have several friends my friend steven anytime he moves anywhere even if it's from like one apartment to the another he just sells everything and just buys new stuff right like he just so doesn't like, he doesn't care like, at all he moves in rebirth like the phoenix kind yeah of yeah thing. always like he's completely a constant yeah absolutely earth and then, then everything starts over again absolutely yeah, yeah. 
I admire I, I admire that. Oh, I I, I wish I were like that, right? I'm not like that. Yeah, yeah. so I Definitely I am not. much more on the hoarder side of the spectrum. Like, yeah, me if too. If you've got man. like complete, you know, ascetic and then hoarder, right? If that's the two scales that we're looking at, I am mm. on the hoarder side of average, right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The one way that I have been able to control that i used to like buy every dvd for every movie i even mm -hmm. marginally mm -hmm. liked I, every tv series dvd i mean when i was in college i had so much garbage right i mean it just i was the worst um and i've gotten a lot better and one of the ways and we're getting sort of in the psychology of, of hoarders here but you know, whatever. <laughs> we don't we don't there's no agenda <laughs> on these on these streams <laughs> It's so funny how it's, it just goes in these really weird talking. directions. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, one of the the ways that I have been able to sort of control my sort of and I this is hereditary. Both my mother and my father are both collectors, borderline hoarders. Yep. Yeah. When they when they were yeah. moving out of their house a couple of years ago, my God, I mean, it was just. We, I, I took, I took a, a bunch of books of my mother's to half price books, and they were like, we, we don't want these. I mean, half price books refuse oh, them, man. right? Like these, yeah. these just garbage books that no one wanted. I ended up throwing away a bunch of books mm -hmm. because not even half price books would take them, right? I mean, wow. so like my collecting instinct, I fully believe is. I mean, if it's not hereditary, it's deeply ingrained learned behavior because this is the environment mm -hmm. I grew up in. Yeah. But the way I control it, honestly, is through Amiibo, right? Mm -hmm. I don't I don't buy mm -hmm. DVDs. I don't buy action figures. I don't buy Legos. I don't buy any toy ever. But when a new Amiibo comes out, I have carte blanche self-approval to always buy it, right? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And that reward, right, the, the knowledge that I will never say no to buying another one of these toys from a very deeply rooted psychological place makes it okay to not buy anything else. <laughs> and it, this sounds dumb, but it, it, it like, is, is it's, for it's real. Your, you're, you're gamifying your own... To a certain extent, yeah. Yeah. Which is, yeah, I, mean, I think that's a good way to handle it and at least get a get some control over it and it's I mean, worth kind of yeah go ahead yeah but i live it's funny like i live vicariously through you a lot like you'll show me some of the news like man <laughs> I, know, I, I know i kind of want it makes me scratch my itch like for me i went cold turkey i was like i'm, I'm done yeah I'm anything anymore. i mean occasionally i'll pick up something but it's it is much more manageable now i like, i remember movie. because we've talked about the disney oh, infinity those man. figures are so oh, cool oh my god so those are dangerous design. they were just yeah, so, so awesome look i love the, the I mean, it just, I mean, this is a whole stream in and of itself. The, yep. the company who made those, the way they took all these disparate franchises and found yep. an art yep. style that managed to work across all of them, it's brilliant. Yep. It's absolutely one of the most brilliant. Yeah. I, I would, I want to meet the art director of Disney yeah. Infinity and huge, shake their hands because. Huge fan, huge fan. Unbelievable, I, right? Yeah, man. And yeah. I remember I was I was at it was funny I was at Half Price Books trying to sell all my mom's garbage, mm -hmm. and I was wandering around and I remember I saw all these Disney Infinity figures, including a bunch of Marvel ones like Hulk and Captain America, mm -hmm. and I grabbed a photo with my phone and I sent it to you and you were like, Oh, oh my god, jeez, <laughs> why did you do that? You're so you, mean. You came so you close. So I know. Mean. Like oh, pulled me right back in again. Yeah, I was like. Then, uh, I do so, love, them. yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't care for Disney. I don't care for Marvel. I don't care for Star Wars. Good design is good I don't design care for, yeah. But good man. design is good design, man. Mm -hmm. And just mm -hmm. the fact that you can make these action figures of Jack Sparrow, Captain America, and Yoda, yeah. and yeah, go, and wow, all these all kind of fit, right? I mean, and that's it's, the, and that's the, it's and that's unbelievable. Yeah. And that's and that's the that's the hook because. You can't just buy one or two. You want no. to get a whole bunch of them so you can actually see holistically how clever they are. Yeah. Because as a whole, they work as a design. It's yeah. So absolutely. It was like some of the best genius toy stuff I've seen in a long time. I know, time. but it's so good. And I, I, I know we've talked about this on previous streams, so I'm, I'm not. I won't belabor the point, but the 
the cost overhead of physical product is immense. It's way, yeah. way more than you think it is. So it doesn't, excuse me, it doesn't surprise me that Disney sort of um, axed Disney Infinity. It was just the, the cost of doing this stuff is just, it's too much, right? Mm-hmm. It's, it's one of the reasons why there are several Amiibo that are so rare is Nintendo or From Software or whoever is commissioning these pieces, they do a, you know, um, a cost-benefit analysis, a P&L, on these figures and, and they go like where you know where is the sweet spot in terms of manufacturing these figures versus mm-hmm. like we don't want to leave these figures on store shelves we lose money if we lose these figures on store shelves and so they have an army of accountants and other sort of you know financial advisors trying to predict exactly the right amount of units to produce to meet demand but not leave supply on the shelf Right. Hmm. And Nintendo, because it's a Japanese company, tends to err on the side of conservatism. Oh, and so they well known always, under, yeah, I mean, famously. Always undershoot it. Yeah. Always. And it just creates this weird, stark frenzy demand. Mm-hmm. Just, you know, mm-hmm. man, from now, the early days. Now, you know. Amiibo have existed for over a decade now. And so that kind of demand side issue has evaporated to a certain expo- ex- to a certain point because the only people who still buy these things are idiots like me um <laughs> they're, they're still cool though i i don't know if i'd say idiots i'd say that you just, i think you might be a more of a masochist to even try to go out in the wild and get these at this point i think yeah. they're insanely hard yeah you know, they're insanely they're they've gone to the point where it's it's collectible saturation where you're gonna you're never gonna outmaneuver a bot so mm-hmm. i was i wouldn't say idiot more insane <laughs> you'd fall more fair. insane fair. insane category more than anything else you know well you've even like i think uh stream a couple streams like last year's streams like that you talked about how you reserved a game spot monster hunter Amigo, yeah i think yeah you had to go through hoops just and he ended up having to just buy it right yeah so just, yeah what what ended up having that one is is i uh, pre-ordered these three, but the address, I think, there was some weird minor issue, just like the, mm-hmm. the zip code or something was wrong on the purchase information. And yeah. because of this logistical, minor logistical issue, GameStop couldn't bill my credit card. And at like three in the morning when they were trying to bill the credit card to ship the units, uh, they couldn't. And so they canceled the order. And so I woke up to this email saying, hey, we've canceled your pre-order because we couldn't bill your credit card. Oh, my gosh. And so I called GameStop, and they were like, we don't care. (laughs) (laughs) But the the funny thing is, though, is I got on uh, a Japanese importer website and bought all three for the, the retail price. The only thing that was higher was the import tax. Right? Yeah, you the ship. Yeah. Yeah, so I had to pay the import tax on it, but the the price was same. So like my Monster Hunter Rise, um, uh, Magnamalo, Palamute, and Palico amiibos are Japanese, and I had to pay They're the still, import yeah. premium on them. But that was it. So oh I just God, ended up importing them. Yeah. Yeah, but the fact that you had to do that, it's just crazy. Yeah. Because you couldn't you couldn't just go into Target and buy them. No, you know no, I mean? they were a GameStop exclusive and. GameStop was notorious. Any any exclusive amiibo at GameStop was notorious for, notorious for under production. Yep. Yeah. I'm That's not, you no know. Surprise there. Solaire was a GameStop exclusive. So mm-hmm. surprise, surprise. Mm-hmm. I got. Yeah. Like I am not a lucky person. In fact, I am one of the most like. I'm not like so unlucky that I'm not living in a cardboard box. You know that I'm living in a cardboard box between in an alley but somewhere. Quality of life. Quality of life. Unlucky, I have the worst annoying, like privileged white person luck. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> so what, what? What it is to say is is that shit like that that Monster Hunter thing, right? Where like uh, I pre-ordered uh, it, everything was great, and then there was some weird address technicality is the reason that they canceled the pre-order, right? But yeah, every once yeah. in a blue moon, I will get just phenomenally, just unbelievably lucky, right? It's I'm either my baseline is just annoyingly unlucky 
and then I will mm-hmm. get just these spikes of unbelievable luck. And mm. with my amiibo collecting, I've had two incidences of that. So there's these two very, very, very rare amiibo that I I got just by randomly going onto GameStop's website and going, oh, those are there? Mm-hmm. Okay, I'll get that, right? Uh, mm-hmm. One of them is the 50th, or not 50th, uh, 30th anniversary Mega Man Amiibo. And it's Mega Man X in a dynamic pose with the 30th anniversary logo on the base of the Amiibo. Okay. And the other one is the Diablo 3 Loot Goblin Amiibo. And mm. what's unique about that one is it's the only Amiibo that has an uh, an ellipsoid base. All other Amiibo have a circular base. This one has an ellipsoid base. That's interesting. Base. Yeah. I just, I just like randomly got on GameStop and they just happened to have one left in stock. And it, online? Times. Online. Yeah. What? I bought it. Wow. They were at my local store. I just drove and picked them up at my local store. Yeah. No fuss, of, no yeah. foul. So yeah, that's that's pretty crazy. I have I don't... really weird luck, right? Like I have mm-hmm. a baseline almost... annoyingly bad luck, and then just these spikes of phenomenally good luck. Maybe the amiibo guys just noticed that you like they'd like to just give you <laughs> super hyper reactive. Yeah, like, you know, it's either it's either on or off switch for them for you. Yeah, like you know, I don't giving know. me a taste, giving me a taste. Yeah, yeah, anyway. crazy. Um. um but we've been going for about 40 minutes now. Yeah, uh, I we're in a good spot. I'm just, uh, I mean, I'm not completely done, but let's just zoom out here and I'll show you where we're at. But yeah, we got her pose here. Mm-hmm. So I'm happy with that. I still need to work on this pose for her to pounce up. But we got this. And um, as we were talking through the, our, our stream, you notice I grabbed all the parts from her three-quarters pose. I did see that, yeah. Massage the pose, you know. Like, you know, and again, I'm not trying to be um, a huge stickler for everything being perfect, but I do want her to feel like she's on model, but also the, 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 the kind of back in pre-built kind of thing with climbing Jane is she's a salamander. So she's mm-hmm. very malleable. She's never going to be a hundred percent. Like she can kind of move around a little bit and she's not like a gelatinous, like uh boy in his blob or anything like that. But, uh, I, I do like the fact that I have some, and, and honestly it's an economical choice too, because, I, uh, for me, animating this, I need to have some flexibility and some looseness with the with the character to make sure I can keep going and make and might make new stuff. So, uh, is she perfect compared to the KJ Master, which is uh, this is what I would consider a tighten up pose? All this stuff here, she's not there completely yet, but she still feels like Clownie to me. Um, mm-hmm. But I I do want to like, what do you think? What's your thoughts? I mean, until you mentioned it, I didn't uh, but, notice it. I mean, now that you mention it, it feels like yeah. her left upper arm mm-hmm. is slightly yep. short yep 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 um, so, so these are relative to the length of her here. fingers at least right Re- relative yeah. to her forearm and the length of her fingers yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah that's yeah that, that, that's 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 the type of stuff i'm like i want it to feel like when you look at it and it feels okay that's good and then i can go and do this fine tune things but see as you're as you're looking at it, that's the same thing i'm doing too is i'm okay i know what i need to still do on this so that's why it's not done but it's close enough to where I might move on. And then when I do my next pass for animation, I'll go and even tweak it even further. Mm-hmm. The main thing is I want to make sure that, that her mouth pack works. And, you know, I was able to flip through that a little bit and test it earlier. For the most part, it works. But, I mean, there's going to be a couple of poses where it may not. But, yeah. But that works. And that's the same mouth pack I used before on her three quarters. So, happy happy victory there. And, if yeah, like, um, if for any viewer, tune in to an episode a year ago or more where James is working on those mouth packs. Um, but yeah, we did, so, there was definitely an episode where you're working on that. Yeah. So we're able to use it for the most part. Like I said, I might make this mouth pack more unique to kind of fit this pose better, but a lot of the poses do work. So I'm happy with that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, you're uh, like you, like you just pointed out with the arms. That's something I want to, I was even during the stream. I was trying to tweak the arms a little bit more, but it's still not fortunately right, but I'll get there. Um, let me get back to it. But the general feeling of the pose is all here. Mm-hmm. So I'm happy with that. So, yeah. So, yeah, that's where we're at for tonight. And we can call it good for tonight. Cool. Well, we're right at 45 minutes. Uh, Any more. I remember once upon a time, we were really strict about trying to hit 30 minutes. And then. I know, but when you're talking about hoarding and amiibos, <laughs> I don't know how you can not go past. I don't know how you can just keep that within a condensed 30 minutes. Oh, yeah. No. Big I mean... ass. 
Well, you know, and yeah. well, before we before we leave, this is sort of our French exit for tonight. You know, it's more than just sort of the um, sort of the uh, the cool production design of the figures. There, you yeah. know, a lot of these have stories behind them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Either, you know, either directly related to how I came across the Amiibo, as in the case with the Monster Hunter Rise ones, right? Where that was, it's a story in and of itself to collect those. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or just memories related to the figures themselves, like like the Banjo-Kazooie figure. I mean, that that's one of my favorite Amiibo, just because of how important a game Banjo-Kazooie was to me when it came out in 1999-2000 realm, right? I mean, that was mm-hmm. that was peak rare. I mean, when, mm-hmm. when Banjo-Kazooie came out, my dream, my absolute, like, just... I would die a happy man if, if this came true, was to work at Rare, right? Mm-hmm. And, and Banjo-Kazooie was sort of the the apex of Rare. I mean, that was Banjo-Kazooie was absolutely Rare at its best, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To this day, yeah. I mean, I, I have the Nintendo Switch Online expansion pack, so I, I can play all the Nintendo mm-hmm. 64 games, and Banjo-Kazooie is, is there. I'm halfway through it again. I've played Banjo Kazooie on the Nintendo 64 no less than four times. When the Rare Replay came yeah. out on when Rare Replay came out on the Xbox One, I played the Banjo Kazooie again. I platinumed, uh, which is a, a, a PlayStation term, but whatever. Crazy. I hundred yeah. percented all the Banjo Kazooie achievements on that, and then now I've got this, and I'm halfway through Banjo Kazooie again. I have played that game man. so many times. And anymore, it's less about the quality of the game because honestly, by today's standards, Banjo Kazooie is extremely sloppy. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just from a just from a control standpoint, it's really floaty, really yep. slidey. You know, it's just anyway. But the memories I have attached to that game are so ingrained into my childhood that I, it gets a free pass. And so, anytime I look at the yeah. Banjo Kazooie figure, there's you know. 20 years or more of memories associated with it Mm -hmm. and so Mm -hmm. everything from just the stories of how i came to acquire the figures to memories that go far outside of the scope of the game itself i don't know there there is something fun about looking at at those and having them inspire so many memories Mm -hmm. you know so anyway uh, suffice it to say, I will, I don't know, I'll probably sell these Hellboy action figures, but the um, Amiibo ones, they're not going anywhere yeah. for the foreseeable future. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess we'll see. We'll see what happens, uh, the next few days as you Yeah, ponder. as I start, start pondering and thinking about, you know, streamlining again. Mm-hmm. But anyway, uh, we'll wrap it up there. We'll leave it there today. We were close to 50 <laughs> minutes. Um... As always, you can head over to our Patreon site. Just type in calamityjane.rocks into your browser bar. That'll take you to our Patreon site. Please consider uh, becoming a subscriber and helping us make this cartoon a reality. We're also on Facebook and YouTube, which is presumably where you found the stream. Facebook is where we tend to post updates about what's happening on the day-to-day side of scheduling and streaming and whatnot. You can also find us on Twitter, at Jane Salamander. We do uh, three tweet stories most weeks where we do silly insider stuff about Calamity Jane. So if you want to learn all of this a contextual backstory about Calamity Jane, uh, you can head over there and read those tweets that will not make any sense to you except for after we're like five seasons into the show and you realize how weirdly obsessive we are about this property. Um, other than that, I think next week uh, everything will stay the same. I don't see any reason why we will cancel it on the 8th. So we'll be back at the same Calamity time, same Calamity cha- channel. Uh, good night, everybody. Stay safe out there. Good night. <laughs>